Hi, this is Dr. Stanley Kim, hematologist in Claremont, California. Today, we will discuss chronic myeloid leukemia. Patients with a chronic myeloid leukemia used to have only one treatment option for long-term survival, that is bone marrow transplantation. But it is harsh and a difficult therapy. Thank God, now we have a tyrosine kinase inhibitors. The first tyrosine kinase inhibitor, Gleevec, was introduced about 20 years ago. Since then, we have even more potent second generations like a spry cell, Tasigna, or Boosley. With this tyrosine kinase inhibitor therapy, many patients enjoy almost normal lifespan, but they come with some problems. The cost is enormous, and the patient has to take it every day indefinitely. It comes with uh, some side effects as well. So the, some patients who've been on this medicine for many years and uh, in remission stop taking these drugs and to see what happened. Surprisingly, almost half of these patients stayed in remission without cancer coming back for two, three, four, five, even six, seven years. So we are cautiously uh, hoping that some patients may be cured with this tremendous new medicine. Let's discuss more in detail, and uh, thank you for watching. Chronic myeloid leukemia, CML, is also called as chronic myelogenous or chronic granulocytic leukemia. All these blood cells are originated from blood stem cell, which give rise to a myeloid stem cell and the lymphoid stem cells. Most of those cells are from this myeloid stem cell, but the lymphocytes are from lymphoid stem cells. So now we understand that those myeloid leukemia originates from somewhere in this myeloid family. It's acquired genetic disease associated with the chromosome translocation uh, between number 9 and 22. The translocation of chromosome number 9 and 22 forms an abnormal chromosome called the Philadelphia chromosome, the cause of CML. We have a 23 pairs of chromosome, total number of 46. In chromosome 9, there is a ABL1 gene, we call it ABL1 gene, in the long arm. And in chromosome 22, uh, the BCR gene. These chromosomes like each other and they swap their long arms. And the ABL gene uh, is moved to the uh, chromosome 22, just next to the BCR forming BCR-ABL1 fusion gene. As a result, you can see the uh, Philadelphia chromosome having those uh, BCR and ABL1 fusion gene. And this fusion gene produced the uh, abnormal protein uh, called uh, tyrosine kinase, which actually promotes the uh, CML. Up to 50% of patients are asymptomatic at the time of diagnosis. But as disease progresses, the patients feel fatigue, have weight loss, excessive sweating. Big spleen is pretty common, causing abdominal pain or fullness. Bone pain or tenderness as the leukemia cells expanding in the bone marrow. Of course, we expect the high white blood cells and the high platelets and the anemia. Sometimes they develop gout because of rapid cell turnover. How to make a diagnosis of CML? It's not that difficult. The CBC will show high white blood cell counts, and the blood smear examination on the microscope will show many neutrophils and some premature granulocytes. Look at this myeloblast, promyelocyte, uh, myeloblo uh, myelocyte, metamyelocytes. Leukocyte alkaline phosphatase level is low in CML, but high in leukemoid reaction or polycythemia vera. Uh, to confirm the diagnosis, we need to detect the Philadelphia chromosome uh, in cytogenetics or BCR-ABL1 fusion gene uh, by FISH or polymerase chain reaction. Let's look at the real Philadelphia chromosome. In these 23 pairs of human chromosomes, uh, you can find uh, number 22. The left one is normal one and the right uh, one is the short and small chromosome 22, which is the uh, Philadelphia chromosome. About 95% CML patients have Philadelphia chromosomes. 
but more sensitive fish or PCR test may detect those BCR ABL1 uh, positive cells in those remaining 5% of Philadelphia negative uh, CML patients. The Philadelphia uh, chromosomes are seen in 20% of acute lymphoblast leukemia and the 2% of acute myeloblastic leukemia. The FISH stands for fluorescent in situ hybridization. The cells are treated with the probes having fluorescent labeled dyes and examined the microscope. Look at this drawing. In normal cells, having a, a ABL1 gene is uh, labeled with the blue fluorescent dye and the BCR with the red fluorescent dye. And you can see those cells having BCR or ABL genes. In CML patients, you can see the BCR able fusion gene here, RTQPCR, quantitative reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction. It's the very sensitive test by quantifying the BCR ABL messenger RNA transcripts we can monitor disease response after treatment. Please look at this drawing. Basically, it counts the number of messenger RNA uh, having BCR ABL1 transcripts. Because we cannot measure the uh, messenger RNAs, the RNA needs to be uh, converted to DNA by reverse transcriptase. Then the BCR ABA DNAs are amplified by polymerase chain reaction. The CML has a three phases, chronic phase, accelerated phase, and the plastic phase. Most patients stay in the chronic phase for a long time. Uh, myeloblast is less than 10% in this case. In accelerated phase, the myeloblast rise to 10 to 19%, and you can see the white blood cells are uh, increasing, and the spleen gets bigger, and uh, they're not responding well to the uh, TKIs. In blastic phase, it's like uh, acute leukemia. The myeloblast is over 20%. Of 70% of blastic crisis developed to acute myeloblastic and the 30% to acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Tyrosine kinase inhibitors, TKI, revolutionized the treatment of CML. Uh, the BCR ABL1 fusion gene produces abnormally strong tyrosine kinase, which promotes the uh, leukemia cell growth. So by inhibiting the tyrosine kinase, uh, we can stop the uh, leukemia cell uh, proliferation. The first generation is Gleevec, second generation Spricel, Tazigna, and the Bosleaf. The third generation is Iclusig, which is effective for AB, a bcr ABM mutation subtype T315i. Then how to measure the response to TKI? Uh, simply by CBC and the physical to find out the normal white blood cells and the normal palpable spleen, in which condition is called complete hematologic response. The cytogenetic response needs a bone marrow examination to find out the percentage of Philadelphia chromosome positive cells. If they comprise less than 35%, it's called major cytogenetic response. If there is a no more Philadelphia positive cell, uh, it's complete cytogenetic response. But the most important test is a quantitative PCR to measure the molecular response. It detects the BCR ABL1 trans transcript and its amount, which represent the total amount of CML leukemia cells. With the treatment, uh, this transcript number goes down below 10%, 1%, and the, when it reaches to less than 0.1%, it's called major molecular response it drops further down to uh, below 0.0032%. It's a deep molecular response, means basically no uh, transcript detectable by current method. The Gleevec, imatinib, is an amazing drug, producing 10-year overall survival over 80%. The responders basically have a close to normal life expectancy. Patients take 400 milligrams a day, but can be increased to 600 milligrams. It has side effects, usually mild, edema, diarrhea, muscle cramps, rash, uh, low phosphate level, osteoporosis. Patients need to avoid uh, cytochrome P450 enzyme inhibitors or inducers, including grapefruits, clarithromycin, erythromycin, some antifungal, antiviral, deltiazem. 
and this and the uh, anti-epileptics with Pompin St. John Ward. Monitoring response requires the CBC every one to two weeks until complete hematologic response is achieved. Then we do the uh, quantitative PCR every three months. For the optimal response, we, we expect the uh, uh, molecular response less than 10% or a major cytogenetic response at three months after the therapy. At six months, we expect the uh, molecular response less than 1% and the complete uh, cytogenetic response. At 12 months, we expect the uh, a major molecular response. Thereafter, uh, maintaining the uh, mole major molecular response. The second generation uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitors, spry cell, tazigna, and uh, bosleaf. It's more potent than imatinib, inducing faster and deeper cytogenetic response and the molecular response. But it actually didn't improve the overall survival when compared with the uh, Gleevec. They have a unique side effects. The spry cell has more lung problem, causing poor effusion in almost 30% of patients. And it also can cause platelet dysfunction, uh, prone to bleed and uh, uh, QT prolongation. Tasigna nilotinib has more uh, side effect with the uh, cardiovascular system, causing atherosclerosis, arterial occlusive disease, stroke, coronary artery disease, and the QT prolongation. Uh, pancreatitis is a unique side effect, and it also increased the raised the blood sugar levels. Bosley is more mostly GI toxicity, especially frequent diarrhea. All these uh, drugs are uh, metabolized by the cytochrome P450 enzyme system, so we have to avoid those inducers and inhibitors. What if, if the patients no longer respond to uh, uh, initial glibac? Of course, we can change to different second generation TKIs, but uh, we also like to find out the possible causes uh, including lower imatinib drug levels, so patients can increase the dosage and uh, check the patients not taking the uh, herbs. Because St. John's Wort or Ginkgo Bloba lower the uh, uh, glabic drug levels. And we ordered the uh, BCR ABL mutation analysis uh, because certain uh, subtype of mutation, T315I, is a very unique. Patients with this mutation. Uh, are no longer respond to the uh, uh, other TKIs. Only TKI uh, effective for this T315I mutation is panatinib, eiclusiv. And this eiclusiv has a very important side effects, arterial and the venous thromboembolism, so you have to be very careful. And we also check the additional chromosome abnormalities. About 6% of chronic phase CML eventually progress to a more aggressive, accelerated, or plastic phase, and they require the uh, second generation TKI or even higher dose of, of uh, imatinib, the Gleevec. Uh, for the uh, plastic crisis, the chemotherapy is added on top of uh, TKI. Eventually, allogeneic bone marrow transplantation should be considered. If the patient stops taking TKI and uh, stays in remission, it's called treatment-free remission. Is it amazing? But not everybody can stop taking TKI. The eligibility includes adult patients chronic phase on TKI therapy for at least three years, who achieved a deep molecular response for over two years, who are willing to have a close monitoring with a frequent PCR test. Amazingly, 50% stays in uh, remission after stopping TKI or two years or even longer. Even uh, they lose their major molecular response, they always can reinitiate TKI, and then almost all patients will achieve the uh, deep molecular response. The TKI withdrawal symptoms include a mild musculoskeletal pain. In two, uh, 2017, FDR approved uh, Tasegna for TFR. If those patients who stop taking uh, TKIs and never have this CML recurred, does it mean the cure? Thank you for watching.